Good morning, everyone, and welcome to all those who are, who are joining us on our television broadcast as well as on our YouTube channel. As we gather here this morning at Christ Lutheran Church for the fifth Sunday in Lent, I would like to shout out happy birthdays this weekend to Hannah Brooks, Mary Jo Schemmelfenig, and Holly Vogt. So happy birthday to all of you. Um, I don't know that I have any other announcements, so I would invite you to join with us in our opening hymn, Christ the Life of All the Living. Self for me once giving to the darkest depths of woe. Through your suffering, death, and merit, life eternal I inherit. Thousand, thousand thanks are due, dearest Jesus, unto Suffered great affliction and have borne it patiently. Even death by crucifixion, only to atone for me. For you chose to be tormented, that my doom should be. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We confess, we confess that, that we have turned away from you knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. Please join with me in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your, Your Son came into the world to free, to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of Your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve You in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It 
was for me, oh Lord, when you cried upon your knees, how could it be, oh Lord, when in blood and sweat and tears, you dismissed your final fears, when you faced the soldier's spears, you stood for me. for me, oh Lord, when it seemed like your defeat, they could not see, oh Lord, when you faced the mob alone, you were silent as a stone, and a tree became your throne, it was for me. Our first reading is from the Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord.
The second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 6 through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies and also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the readings. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus Lord, the one whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, 
Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it, and Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The gospel of the Lord, we say, praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you this day from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. All of our readings for this morning show the absolute sovereign, amazing power of our God. First, in the reading from Ezekiel that was shared, to imagine a valley of dry bones rattling, making their noise, an endless vision of, of seeing death all about, hope lost, despair, the understanding that, at least from this side of heaven, that there was no possibility of further life. Hope was gone for the people of Israel. There was no identity. They didn't know who they were removed from their family land, the promised land that made of them a nation like no other. And you can hear all the seeming visual effects resound in your head and the words that are prophesied by Ezekiel, calling them back to life, breath being entering their body to make them live again 
the sinews and skin, the flesh and skin, everything coming together that, that they might once again be whole, but more than that, and the promise to the people of Israel that once again, once again, they would be a people after God's own heart, hearkening back to the original creation story where God brings something out of nothing, giving the people of Israel who have lost everything the promise of all things once again. And then we come to our gospel story this morning and hear about how Jesus is with his disciples and, and doing that which he did in those last days of his ministry, teaching and preaching and healing and, and bringing near the absolute kingdom of God, revealing God to all the people. That's amazing. And then the call comes, the message comes, that Lazarus, beloved friend, is ill. Scripture doesn't tell us how ill was he, what was wrong with him, uh, would it cause death. Obviously serious enough that the two sisters, Martha and Mary, have sent word that Jesus might be notified, not with, with an ask that Jesus might come, that he would somehow save Lazarus, change the circumstance, just notification, but surely underlying, as we have been told, that these are dear friends of Jesus, this home in Bethany two miles out from Jerusalem, where Jesus was, uh, that he would come. That was decidedly the expectation. And the gospel writer tells us that he decided to stay there for two days more. And the fact that the gospel writer puts that in there lets us know, sit up, take notice, because something else is going on here. His disciples can't really understand why he's doing this, but hey, he's their master, he's their teacher, they're not going to question it. Besides, it's not an opportune time with the height of tension and conniving by the Jewish leaders to end Jesus. They're not really questioning that he's not going to go over to Bethany. Um, but then Jesus, as they, you know, and here's what we do, you know, well, it's not so bad. If he's just fallen asleep, it's not a big deal. So isn't that how we rationalize why we shouldn't do something when really everything that they were saying was about their own self-preservation and keeping their master alive? But then Jesus says flat out, no, he's dead. He's dead. And then they can only be in absolute wonderment about what's going on. When he finally says, let us go to Bethany, then the disciples are reminding him of what they know. The fact that this is not a good idea, but if he's going, hey, let's go with him so that we may die too. That they're going to accompany their master all the way to the end, and so they all go. As we come upon the scene in Bethany and Martha coming out to meet Jesus and and the words uh, asking or saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that whatever you would ask of God, he will do. It's kind of like a quiet challenge. But then Jesus tells her, well, your brother will rise again. And she says to him, I know he will rise again in the, la in the resurrection on the last day. But then he says, I am ego me, the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then Jesus does kind of an incredible thing. He says, do you believe this? Martha could have said yes, because you could get away with that, just yes. 
She could have said, yes, I do, but she didn't. And she goes on further to say, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Wow. And then she goes back, gets Mary, who says the same thing, and they all return to the area where the mourners have gathered. First and foremost, I would want to let you know that what Martha said was no different, well, actually, it was a little different, than what Peter said when the question was asked in earlier chapters, who do people say that I am? And while many other answers were given about a prophet, a teacher, Elijah, etc., Peter made the announcement, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus, turning to him, says, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Martha went one step further. She speaks about the fulfillment of Hebrew scripture when she says, the one coming into the world. I have to tell you that Jesus really didn't expect that answer. And while in stories of Martha and Mary, I mean, he would have hoped for that answer, but I don't think that Jesus expected it. And while in the stories of Mary and Martha that are told, and Martha's always busy, and she's always missing out on the great parts, and Mary is the one who comes and sits at Jesus' feet, and she's getting the better part, and all of that conversation, don't underestimate Martha. There are all kinds of theologians in the world. There are scholars who have been great and wonderful teachers for us all, who dive into the scriptures, who pick things apart in original languages, who purpose to interpret and reveal the divine to us. But make no mistake, Martha is a theologian. She's a theologian of the kitchen. She is a theologian of the marketplace. She is a theologian of serving. And as she did the task to which she was called by her Lord and Savior, Martha took in a great deal, as ordinary people often do in, in the business of their lives. So when Martha, the theologian of the kitchen, declares that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world, I would offer to you that the very gates of hell shook. And while Jesus had hoped for such an acknowledgement, he did not expect it. Theologians of the kitchen can always surprise you. Ordinary people can always surprise you. And that is something we should be very mindful of. As they walk back and, and the mourners who are there, uh, some of them are paid to be mourners because it was a matter of social propriety to have a great crowd gathered. And we know that there were Jews and other people who were there with the sisters to mourn the passing of Lazarus. And it might seem rather odd to our culture to think about paying for mourners, but I know that dating back to times in Europe and early days of America, that that was a practice. So that it showed honor and prestige. And I received an, an email from a dear friend of mine who, who was an intern for me in Canby, who, Vicar Janet, her husband, uh, who I love dearly, both of them, and he contracted the coronavirus. Phil was hospitalized. He was ill for many days, hospitalized twice before they actually figured out what it was in the hospital for many days. And finally, like just yesterday, they were able to come home. 
and Pastor Janet, and her husband's also a pastor, had, had shared that he came home but still, still had his mask with the oxygen turned way up, and he's very weak yet and has a long way to go before recovering, but her beloved is home and in an upstairs room, and she shared how in the room where he was that Phil cried, and tears were rolling down his face because he was very grateful to be going home, to be coming through this virus to be well again eventually, however long that might take, to be reunited with his loved one. But there, there was another man who was there who had died, and he was weeping. And Pastor Janet noted that we didn't know his name, or his story, or where he came from. And so the idea of professional mourners, of being connected with those that we do not know, is not so far a stretch in this time, that we can be impacted by all the deaths around us, that suddenly, in a new way, Janet and Phil and all of us are experiencing the truth of those words, one man's death diminishes me. That we are all in this together in a profound way. So it was that the Jews were there and were mourning. Maybe they knew Lazarus, maybe they didn't. It really doesn't matter. Being a part of humanity, bearing the hurt and the sorrow and, and the celebration and joys are a part of what it is to be alive. So as Jesus comes to that place where all those are gathered around and, and Mary has come out to greet him with the same words basically that, that Martha has said and uh, Jesus asks, you know, where have you laid him? And Martha says, well, Lord, he's been dead for four days. You know, we don't get quite all the theatrical impact that we have in that first lesson of Ezekiel, hearing bones rattle, hearing the breath of God, finding things coming, being pulled literally back to wholeness and life once again being restored. We don't have quite all the sound effects, although when Jesus tells them to roll away the stone, we can imagine the sound of this great stone scraping against the outer surface of the cave as Jesus cries out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The gospel writer tells us that he cried out with a loud voice, and that's something we should pay attention to. He could have just said, Lazarus, wake up. Lazarus, come out. But he didn't. He cried with a loud shout. And I have to think that because Martha's declaration that was probably said very quietly and soft-spoken, being such a loud thunderclap that shook the gates of hell, that it was in that momentum, being swept along in it, that Jesus could cast aside all care for, for this world that human side of himself. And the truth that now everything would be set in motion. This was it. This is the last act, so to speak, that Jesus would perform before now the machine that intended to crucify him and all evil in the creation revved up its rep engines in order that they be rid of this Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. All the cards are on the table.
Lazarus comes out. Do you know we never hear about him again in the gospel? Curious thing. Some have said the Jews thought that they really needed to probably kill him too because what was he? If you're planning to kill someone because they are a false prophet doing evil things against God and the ways of human order, to have someone who has been raised from the dead be a walking, talking, living, breathing proof, evidence of the power of God, you need to get rid of that before you go to trial. But we don't know what happened to Lazarus. What I do know is this, is we embark on that path beginning next Sunday with Palm Sunday and entering into Holy Week, the, the Triduum, the three holy days of Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, the mother of all Sundays, we will be reminded powerfully of the forces in the world that play against the goodness of God coming near. But I would offer to you in this time of uncertainty and fear and doubt that there should be no question about the power of this one that we call Messiah, Son of God, the one who came into the world that all people may have life in his name, that everywhere that word is proclaimed and spoken and lived out, whether via kitchen theology or market theology or around our own dinner tables, we are rattling the gates of hell. And I remind you that nothing, nothing can prevail against the church that is the body of Christ. God's peace, strength, power, and great courage be to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please join in singing, I am the bread of life.
join with me in confessing our faith together in the Nicene Creed. We believe believe in in one God, God, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth, of all that is seen and and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ, the the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, connect all faith-filled people into one body. Breathe your spirit into the church and bless the work of those who continue to sustain its ministries. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, you grieve when the world you have made suffers. Heal areas of the world damaged by natural disasters. Restore all lands and waterways with your beauty and continue to create new life in all of creation. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, restore all who watch and wait with eager expectation. For those longing for the end of war, for those waiting for new life in new nations, for leaders seeking election, and for those in need of humanitarian relief, Provide us with your hope. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Help us to hear your voice speaking to us in the midst of uncertainty and sickness. We pray especially for Steve Haddlestead, Nancy Melismone, Mary Entinger, Melva Carlson, Sandra Brenhog, Jeanette Nelson, Jill Grell, Tom Roseski, Bo Brelia, Jeff Loudon, Marie Clicky, Nolan Johnson, Mary Lou Carlson, Colleen Bickman, Deb Elkers, Arlene Steeny, Julia Hansen, Gary Brown, and Edie Noel. Provide strength and perseverance and serenity to all those who work in caring for the health and well-being of our mind and bodies. 
Fill us with compassion and empathy and keep us faithful in our prayer. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of life, we give thanks for your inspiration as we envision new ways and create opportunities for this congregation to connect with our community and to care for the needs of our neighbors. Guide our imaginations and strengthen our ties with our partners in all ministries and services. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And And also also with with you. you. Please share the peace of Christ with those with whom you are gathered by placing your hand over your heart and sharing a verbal greeting. Peace. At this time of offering, we ask that you prayerfully keep in mind the ongoing ministries here at Christ Lutheran Church and that you continue to send your tithes and offerings to the church through mail or by signing up for Simply Giving or by an offering online. The Simply Giving instructions and forms and the link for online giving can both be found on our website. Please join with me in our offering prayer. Holy and generous host, you You set set a table table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In closing announcements, um, being mindful of the governor's mandate uh, this past week to shelter in place, that uh, beginning top of next week, that we will be locking our outer doors and encourage anyone with communication uh, needed to be getting to the church, such as the offerings and tithes, um, or anything else, like with the columbarium or with, with gifts that you might have for the personal care kits for Lutheran World Relief that the Women of Christ Lutheran are collecting, uh, as well as the um, McLeod County uh, Emergency Food Shelf Drive, which has been extended to April 30th, that you would call ahead to the church, to the church office, that uh, we could come to the door and we will gladly receive whatever it is that that you would need to get to us. Um, So having said that, um, again, I just reiterate what Vicar Susan had shared at the offering time, that we have two opportunities for uh, two differing ways to contribute toward the ministry of Christ Lutheran Church. And if um, that uh, appeals to you as a way to participate in the life and ministry partnership here, by all means, do make use of that. Also, the executive team is in conversation regarding next steps forward, and I would very much encourage you to stay abreast of of the happenings here at Christ Lutheran Church and pertinent information for our life together that can be found on our website and our Facebook page. With that, receive the Lord's blessing. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. 
Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen. Amen. In our closing hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? What wondrous love is this? Wondrous love is this, O my soul. What wondrous love is this that comes Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse. Share the good news. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.